Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I forgot mid welcome that like what I said. Yeah. So then it came to me and I just spat it out real fast. Good. What I thought we could do today was I have this older bouquet of flowers and obviously you can see that it's it old, it old, it aged. And the roses, like I didn't do anything to dry them out properly. I didn't use silica gel. I didn't, obviously I didn't put them in like the microflur like I normally do. And I feel like that's 99% of the time. That's what I'm showing you guys is flowers that I've taken and like specifically dried them in silica gel or in like the microflur, like dried them in sort of a professional way, I guess. But I feel like how many people, I was saying this earlier, how many people have silica gel? and are drying their like wedding bouquets in silica gel. Most people like hang them upside down to dry them. So I wanted to show you guys what you could do with a bouquet of flowers that just kind of dried over time and you might not think that you could do something magical with them, but I assure you, you can. So we're gonna do something with some like dried flowers that dried over time and naturally. So I have this enormous heart mold. Look at her. I'm looking. Are you looking? Wow. <laughs> right? It's amazing. Yeah. It's huge. I bought it forever ago and uh, I still haven't used it. It's literally still in the plastic and everything. So I'm freaking giddy up in here. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I said giddy up. Yeah, you did. <laughs> That's annoying, but I'm, I'm so excited to use it. <laughs> I'm so excited to use this enormous mold and we're going to make an amazing piece. What we're also going to do is because I'm extra and I just feel it today. Uh, we're going to do some 3D creep because I want to do like the very bottom corner with like some 3D Crete. You guys are going to see this, so I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even explain it right now. We're going to use some dried out flowers, some old crusty dusty flowers, and we're going to make it magical. The crusty dusties. Exactly. Crusty dusty magical. You forgot a word. So what we're going to do is get started on mixing up the 3D Crete. And you know what I learned is less is more with this stuff. Like I don't want it to be a really runny consistency. So anyway, we're going to change up the angle. I feel like I'm directing like a, like a plane or something. We're going to change up the angle so you guys can see what we're doing. Here's my 3D Crete. Pretty incredible. It's actually really old. So if the label on yours looks different, that is why. So we got an empty cup here. We're going to get started with some of the Crete and uh, this stuff goes crazy. Show, 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 show. Mask up, huh? So I'm kind of going for like a rocky sort of consistency. So I think I'm going to try to add like less water. So I feel like I always add too much water and then um, I have to add so much of the creep back in. Hey guys, voiceover artsy mad woman here to explain the in-between bits. So I was going for more of a rocky consistency. Did I get that? No. It turned out really, really gooey and you'll see that later. All right. <laughs> okay, perfect. I love it. Perfect, perfect. We're gonna open up this huge heart mold for the very first time. I'm so excited. Ah, so beautiful. My plan is to kind of prop the heart up like this on its side and then pack the crete on the bottom here and kind of make like a rocky texture. Okay, here we go. See, I told you. I told you you'd see it. Here it is. It's gooey. All right, so this is what we got so far. I did have to have Sean come onto my side of the deck uh, because we did have to like prop it up on some trash bags and like angle it so that it can ride this way. It was starting to like puddle and I was afraid that if we left it that way that it would just take up the whole bottom and I have other plans for the bottom. Is I stick any flowers in it? I think that could look good. So yeah, if you use Crete and you have that consistency um, and you don't want it, you want it to be a little more rocky like I did, you're supposed to add less water, which I know I said I was going to do and I still failed at doing that. So anyway, now while the Crete is still wet, I'm sticking little eucalyptus bits out of it and it's super cute. Are you seeing it? We're seeing it. I put a freaking crystal in there. I can't stop adding things to this. Look how beautiful! crystal! I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. For real this time, this is where we're leaving. For promise. reals? Yes. 
I promise. Okay, so it is actually the next day and our Crete layer has dried. I think it looks really cool. Again, it is more of like a beachy vibe than I was going for, but I think I think overall this is gonna look really cool once it's done. So we did stick some eucalyptus like out of it. I feel like that looks so good. It looks really pretty. We also put crystals in there. You guys saw that. I, I really like how this is turning out. So we're gonna get started on mixing up some resin. I'm gonna do that very first layer of resin on the back side and I am gonna be coloring it white. So all of this uh, like dried Crete here, I could use some tape. Like if you are gonna make this clear, uh, then you could take tape and like clean this up. Since my very first layer is gonna be white, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just gonna leave it and we're gonna mix up some resin and get started. All right, so now we are mixing up the resin and the resin I'm going in with is the Counterculture DIY casting resin. So this is, it turned out crystal clear, like freaking water, uh, so perfect. So anyway, we are gonna be coloring this very first layer, but you're gonna see that. So I don't need to explain it, enjoy. So we have our resin mixed up. I am using Counterculture DIY casting resin. So I think what I'm gonna do is most of it is gonna be colored white, but I do want to separate out some resin for some different colors and glitters that I also wanna add. Okay, so these are the three things I'm gonna be adding to these three cups. So we have all of our different colored resins mixed up. So I'm going to start with the white. Just pour it directly on the bottom. So we are pouring in the very first layer as you were seeing with your own eyeballs. Uh, so what I also did was I swirled around with one of my like silicone mixing sticks. I swirled around the different like colored resins and the glitter resin that we mixed up. And honestly, we did lose this, but it is still really pretty. I love it. Oh. No. <laughs> Shut the up. Uh, that looks really good. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Oh my god. For some reason, I feel like you could just fill the rest with clear and that's it. I thought that's what you were going to do. I hope that is what you did. Well, no, we're putting flowers in, remember? Oh my god. I mean, I should probably start putting in the bigger pieces, like the bigger roses. So, we're going to get started on adding some of the flowers. So, I have this rose, it's all squished, but I think it's going to look literally stunning. So this first layer, super eventful. We're also putting the like first few bits, actually the majority of the flowers in this piece went in in this very first layer. So I'm kind of just packing them in. I do leave a little bit of the stem on there just to kind of like have the stem to put into the resin layer. So I just kind of stick them in wherever I feel inspired to put them. All I'm really doing for this is taking these flowers, so these are just like really old dried out spray roses, and I'm cutting them at the stem, leaving a little bit to just like stick into the resin, and then kind of just placing it around. Whatever the inspiration tells me to put it. I like spiky. So my method is basically the same for all of them. Since everything is so dried out, I'm basically just cutting them at the stem and then placing them where I want to put them. And I'm facing them up because when we pop it out, this is going to be the face of it. Okay, I'm going to leave it where it's at and then we'll come back and see if we want to add anything else, fill in some spots. And some stuff is like sinking into the white resin, so we'll see what everything looks like once it's cured and then we'll kind of go from there. Alright, so it's about like 12 hours later, so the, the first layer that we did isn't fully cured yet, but it's cured enough so that I can do another layer. So we're going to start on the clear layer, and so I'm just going to be mixing up some clear casting resin and we'll kind of go from there. I think I'm going to try to like mix in a little bit, like a tiny bit of glitter because we kind of lost it and it sank. So anyway, I'm going to get started on mixing up some resin. 
And now we are on the second layer. So what I also wanted to mention was that, and I know you guys are going to ask, each layer I mixed up two cups of the same casting resin. So each layer, like every single layer in this piece, two cups of the same exact casting resin. So in this layer, I did end up like trying to fill out some of the empty spaces that I thought we had with some more flowers and like little bits just to kind of fill it out. But what I also did was I went in with a glitter and I didn't mix into, there it is, uh, I didn't mix it into any of the resin or anything like that. I just kind of took a popsicle stick and swirled it, you know, the dry glitter around. Um, honestly, you can't really tell that I did that like in the end. Um, so I feel like if you want that look, you're better off like letting your resin cure for a little bit, let it get kind of thick, and then try swirling some glitter around and it might keep this like swirly effect. So now we are on to the third layer. So this is just another two cups of the same casting resin. So for this one, I did end up putting some more flowers to fill in more space. And I still do this like in each layer, I try to have a few more flowers put in because it kind of gives more of a 3D effect and doesn't have all the flowers just sitting on the very bottom. And also in this one, I took this dispersion color in sand. I mixed it into like the little bit of resin I had left over. And I kind of like did these really pretty wispies with this like dispersion color in resin it turned out so pretty so i just used a popsicle stick to kind of swirl that around and then since there is a silicone mold involved i did use a heat gun to pop the bubbles instead of a torch i want to get into the alcohol spraying the alcohol but i just don't know if i like it yes so we are on to the fourth layer and this is just a good old classic layer of clear casting resin again two cups Okay, so I have no idea what layer we're on, do you know? So either layer four or five. So we have some bubbles. The last layer we did cover these like bigger roses. And I kind of had a feeling that we were going to get some like big bubbles. These like huge bubbles formed because of the air pockets that are in these like bigger roses. So I, I usually pop them and just fill them. It's not that big of a deal. Like I'll just take my X-Acto knife or something sharp and I'll like kind of pierce them and get rid of that whole top layer of the bubble. And then it's just kind of like an indent where you can fill it with resin and it's totally fine. But I like them. Why? I don't know. I like these big giant bubbles. Usually, you know, obviously they're not like ugly micro bubbles, which I wouldn't like. But these are like big, like glossy, shiny bubbles. So I kind of think that they're cute. I don't know. I'm going to leave them and we'll find out if you can even still see them um, or if you can, like what it'll look like. So anyway, I think they're cute. I kind of hope that they show up anyway. So commence the fourth, fifth layer. I have no idea. Fifth layer hype. Yeah, uh, that was cringy. Anyway, we're on to the fifth layer. Devastation is about to occur. Prepare yourselves. Prepare. Okay. I'm going to stick around for you. I'm here for you. The bubble has popped. <laughs> I, honestly, like I was so sad that these bubbles could not survive the weight of the resin. I had a feeling, especially when I poured it on, I could tell that the bubbles looked like they were just being like squished and the air was like fighting to come out. So I had to, I had to pop the rest. Uh, that first one popped on its own, but since it popped, I knew that the other ones would do it as well. And if I didn't do this, then they would pop overnight and then they, the air pocket would go to the top and we'd have another set of bubbles on the top. And I just couldn't, I can't do that. So I usually just take something sharp and I'll kind of like pierce the bubble and then kind of guide the air pockets and make sure there are no other bubbles in there. So I'll guide the air pockets out and I just make sure that you can't really see anything and you can't really tell that there was ever a bubble there. All right, you guys, so it is 24 hours later and we are going to pop this out. So I think what I'm gonna have to do, so I don't think I've talked to you guys about this yet, but um, around layer two or three, I realized that the like this layer of Crete that we did, I did it all the way to the top. Why? Why did I do that? Because <laughs> then that would mean that we'd have to like fill the mold and I knew I, I didn't want to like make it as big. I mean, I know we basically did, but I knew that I wasn't gonna have to fill the mold. So I don't know why I did such, like I went all the way up the mold. I have no clue. Um, but 
I think what we're gonna have to do is try, try to like cut this top part of the crete off, like the extra bit that I added. I'm gonna try to cut it off with my Dremel tool. So anyway, we're gonna pop it out first uh, and see what it looks like. I'm so excited. Oh, this is gonna be so satisfying and scary, honestly. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, she is stunning. Okay, who? Who is she? Who said? So this is what the Crete layer on the side of it looks like, which I think looks really, really cool. And then it kind of blends into the white layer, the very first layer that we did. Again, I think that looks really cool. All the layers are like perfectly clear perfection, water-like. It's so pretty. Oh no, it's so, <laughs> it's so pretty. Okay, so now that we've popped it out, like I was saying, I do want to like kind of try to cut off the excess crete that we did right here. It's not very high up. It's maybe like half an inch, you know? So it's not that much, but I do still, I want to cut it off. So, I'm gonna pull out my Dremel tool. And this head, I think is called the cutting wheel or something. It's like a flat disc kind of head. And what I'm gonna try to do, cause I've seen people like cut through stuff this way, but I'm gonna try to hold it this way and kind of cut like this and see if I can get this like excess bit of Crete off. Hey, so using this tool was scary. Um, I don't do well with like, loud tools. It just like paralyzes me. It makes me like terrified, but it did end up working. So like I said, I just held it kind of like straight up and down like that uh, and kind of sliced it across like this. So I did end up, how I did this was I made a line across that way I, I knew where exactly I wanted to cut and I just kind of worked on it. Like I kept cutting. And then once I felt like I cut through enough, cause I didn't want to like have to cut through and skid to the other side and scuff the resin. We are gonna do a top coat, but still. Um, so what I would do was I like kind of cut enough so that I could break it off like you're seeing me do here. So I would cut until I felt like I got through enough of it to break it off. And then I have switched to a different, more pleasant head. That sounded weird, but we did. Uh, so this is just like the little sanding wheel. So much more pleasant, so much nicer. So I'm just kind of sanding this down because it was really jagged. Um, and I'm just sanding it till it's nice and rounded. I also needed to like sand it down because it was still a little too high. <laughs> Nobody asked for slow-mo sanding, but you know what I'm going to give you? <laughs> Some slow-mo sanding. That's the kind of content you can expect from me. If you have any more questions about like using the Dremel tool and like kind of sanding the edges of stuff, I did do a video all about it last week. So go watch that video. I'll try to link it down in the description. And also, you know, like while we're here, I might as well uh, sand the edges of the entire heart. So I did sand like the resin edges. So now we're going to do a top coat and I did tape the sides of the piece and then I propped it up on one of my like smaller silicone molds so that the resin kind of drips off the sides and you know you don't want your piece to like sit in a pool of top coat so I am using the counterculture DIY thin viscosity artist resin literally top tier top coat uh, yeah I said it so I'm just pouring it over the top and then using my silicone mixing tools to make sure it goes over the sides make sure all the sides get perfectly coated And then since there is no silicone mold involved anymore, I am using my torch to pop the bubbles. Okay, guys, it is 24 hours later and we are going to peel the tape off. Okay, so I wasn't even, I literally, my original like whole video idea for this was to just focus on putting the flowers in resin. But apparently we also top coated it and had to sand it. And, but you know what? I'm, I'm pretty happy that we did it because the edges though, the edges. Oh my god. They're literally perfection. Everything is perfect. So 
We are gonna peel the tape off. The reason that I didn't do the liquid latex method that I usually do when I top coat things is just because I was lazy. <laughs> because when you paint like liquid latex in the bottom, I paint such a thick layer that I have to like let it dry overnight and I just didn't have that time. So anyway, that's the only reason why I didn't do that. And now we're gonna peel the little tape off. That is so satisfying. Green tape for the win. Don't use the blue tape. Green tape for the win. There's no way blue tape would have come off that easily. Look how perfect this is. Oh my God. The top coat, perfection. The edges, perfection. And then this whole bit on the bottom here, look at like the whole inside of this and how pretty it is honestly you guys okay when i was like working on this like throughout the process of working on this i kept looking at it and being like i think this is like legitimately one of my favorite like floral pieces that that we've ever made because this is kind of more my vibe like yes i like vibrant colors very clearly but like as far as like my art and like what you know what inspires me the most i feel like these like you know vintagey colors and like these old colors and then the textures as well the textures of like old like crusty like crinkly roses that's my jam <laughs> i literally can't get over this rose at the top here it is so like crinkly and weird looking i mean this one's cool too everything is cool all the textures inside this piece are so cool. I love the like wispies that we did and then the glitter. The, everything is so perfect. It is so pretty. And each layer of the resin is like just water. It's so perfect. Like it came out so freaking perfect. And then the top coat on the sides just made it that much more perfect. <laughs> I'm so proud of this piece. All right. So here are some close up shots of our stunning vintagey heart. I am literally dead over this. I can't. I genuinely feel like this is my like tippy top, if not like tippy tippy top, maybe like top three in the top three of my favorite floral pieces that we've ever made. And we've made some freaking bangers on this channel. So I don't know. It's the colors. It's the whole vibe. It's the fact that they're like old flowers which again I know I said this in the beginning of the video the whole reason that I did this video is because so many people tell me like oh my god I didn't know that I could preserve my flowers I wish I had dried them um you know in silica gel to like preserve their color I feel like you know everybody wants to when they see a piece with roses or flowers in general that have been dried like right away to preserve most of its color I feel like you you see that and you're like oh, I wish I had done that uh, to like preserve most of its color, but there's nothing that says that you can't take your old crusty dusty flowers and make something like this. Like it is, it's honestly better in my opinion. I love this because you know what too is when I look at this, like when I look at old flowers like this, it tells me that the person kept these flowers for a long time. 
which means that the flowers meant something to them. And that doesn't mean that like flowers that you dried right away, obviously they still mean something to the person. But when you have old flowers, you've kept them for a long time. So they obviously mean something. And I feel like when the flowers are old like this, they kind of tell a story. I don't know. There's something about that that is like kind of romantic and, ma and magical to me. So anyway, I love this piece so much. So let me know what you think of our vintage -y heart piece because I'm obsessed with it. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and follow me literally everywhere. It is at Artsy Mad Woman. I love you guys to absolute death. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Is the line to my hair like going whoop? Yep. <laughs> Thanks for confirming so like positively. <laughs> yep. You're welcome. You're entitled to your opinion. I am, aren't I? Aren't you? Aren't I? Aren't you? Aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> There's hair like coming out of my nose coming out right but then it like curls up and tickles the nostrils yeah i i hear you <laughs> do you see that no nope. it's funny i actually don't want to either whoa yeah pretty crazy hello <laughs> welcome <laughs> <laughs>